Who knows, might be useful. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes, please? I need some information about one of your members, Jimmy McLaughlin. I'm afraid that's impossible. Why? Because I can't just hand out private information to a complete stranger. Data protection, you see. Sure, but I'm not a stranger, am I? Aren't you? Then you must be Michael Burns, the one Mr. McClough said was his best friend. No, I'm not Michael Burns. At least you didn't lie to me. I made the name up. Can you make an exception? It's really important. I'm afraid not. So, what are you writing there? None of your business. Sorry, I only asked. I was joking, sir. My late mum always told me be friendly and funny to all the people you meet. Yeah, very funny. Stop making fun of me. I'm sorry, I... I was just taking the mickey out of you. Stop it. Okay, I see. You're not a humorous person. Yes, I am. I can be extremely funny. Why did the blonde climb up a glass wall? Uh, there was someone outside the door who told me that joke. Don't you think that kind of joke is cruel? Well, let's change the subject. There's not much going on today, is there? You're right. It's because Revolution Software is holding a public launch of their new computer game. It's called Broken Sword. Do you know it? I don't, and to be honest, it doesn't really sound that great. I don't think it'll be a success. In a few weeks, no one will be talking about it anymore. Do you know anything about the Templars? Only a little. They were a pop group that made quite a splash in the 60s, you know. The ones with the mop-top hairdos. I think the group you're talking about were the Beatles. The Templars are some sort of chivalric order whose descendants tried to take over the world recently. You don't believe me, do you? Not really, sir. <sighs> well, thanks anyway. Bye. Excuse me. Yes? My name is Stobart. George Stobart. Ah, uh, hi. My name's David. Hi, David. Do you know if the librarian's always so strange? You mean Mrs. Leroy? Not always. She's just having a bad day today. Hey, computer. The one she watches over like her own child has already crashed twice today. It's made her a little jumpy. Now she has to catch up on an incredible amount of work, which explains why she's literally bludgeoning her keyboard. Why did her computer crash? Because some electrical cable in the basement doesn't work properly. It takes at least an hour until that can be repaired. And now, poor Miss Leroy has to do all the work by herself. Don't you have a janitor? The caretaker is at a presentation. Something about a computer game. I see. Listen, David, can you tell me where I find the fuse box in the basement? What do you want to do there? Things. Well, down the stairs, second door to the right, then left and down the corridor. Thanks, I wouldn't have found it by myself. Now I know where to go in the basement. Does the word Templar ring any bells? Sorry, I don't know anything about that. I'm studying animal science and it's nothing about animals, is it? Actually, it kind of is. A weasel and a gorilla are working for them. A weasel and a gorilla? How? Uh, that's a long story. Ah, I see. Unfortunately, I'm in a bit of a rush with this. I have to hand in my essay next Monday. And I haven't even half finished. 
Cheer up. I'm sure you'll make it. Thanks. I wish I had your confidence. It says York United. It says York United. This should work. Mrs. Leroy leaves her desk. Let's see, here's the card index. Manish, Marworth, McKinsley. Aha, there it is, McGlaw, Rangersfield Hall. Somehow, I have a bad feeling about this. Somehow, I feel nervous. Somehow, I feel nervous. How can I help you? Hi, my name is Stobart. George Stobart. I have an appointment with Mr. McGlaw. Strange. He didn't tell me about it. Besides, he has a visitor right now. It's really important. Okay, come in. I'll show you the way. Thanks. Mr. McGlaw's room is at the end of the Northwest Passage. It must be cold up there in the Arctic region. Thanks very much. Without the seal, we won't have a chance. That could cause problems. And you think this American knows something? Definitely, he's real nosy. If you're right, you'll get all the necessary information about the order. How will we catch him, Jimmy? I had two of my best men take care of him. I should be here soon. Even though I can't stand the man, we did agree that you wouldn't hurt him. You only want his information. Sure, that's what I said. Could I use your toilet, please? Of course, it's just down the corridor. George! Andre, you sneaky traitor! It's not what you think! They only want to talk to you. Oh no! Mr. Stobart, we'll talk to you later. In the meantime, you can get familiar with your new roommate. If you aren't familiar already, that is. Who are you? Ah! You 
You seem surprised, Mr. Stobart. How did you... You're not the only one who can play tricks. But I saw you lying dead on the floor of the train compartment. Immediately before I got on the train to Bannockburn, I put on a bulletproof vest. After all, unlike you, I knew what was ahead of us and who we would encounter along the way. A blood cartridge was an incredibly useful means to feign my own death. And how did you escape? That's a very long story. I have followed George to England. I haven't heard from him since his arrival in York. That's not like him at all. I'm really worried. There's something in my bag, but the usual items carried by any woman. And a phone number. Jimmy McClough? Who is speaking, please? My name is Nicole Collard. I'm a TV journalist with the French channel Canal 1. We were thinking about airing an extensive portrait of you, which would include an interview. After all, you're one of the most renowned historians of our time. Hmm. It sounds really tempting, but I think I'm going to have to turn you down. That would be a great pity. We're one of the most successful channels in Europe. Our ratings are very high, which would guarantee that your portrait would find a great audience. You would be able to tell generations of people about your views on some of the most historic events. I mean, you're one of the very few allowed to oversee the preparations for the first moon landing. You were able to follow Armstrong, Aldrin, and the others during their training for the mission. It would be a shame if the public were denied these unique insights. I must admit that you've done your research well. Thanks. Under the circumstances, I'd be happy to meet you here at my house sometime. This may sound a little forward, but how about conducting the interview today? Today? You TV people move awfully quickly, don't you? That's our trademark. Very well, then. I'll be at my house at two o'clock. For reasons of security, I can't tell you my address over the phone. But you can meet my secretary at the History Museum. She's leading a tour for a group of children there. I'll phone her and tell her you're coming. She'll bring you here. I'm sorry that I have to make it this complicated, but there really is no other way. There have been attempts to assassinate me. It seems as if I don't only have friends. I'll wait for you till two o'clock. That's in 20 minutes. If you're not there by that time, We'll have to postpone our meeting by about three weeks because I'm going on a three-week business trip today. Attention, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Derek Stevenson. I'm with the York Police Force. There has recently been an unpleasant increase in theft of luggage at this airport. That's why we are carrying out a routine search. Please stay calm. There's no need to panic. But apart from the airport staff, nobody will be permitted to leave the premises while the search is underway. This should take no longer than 40 minutes. My colleague will give you all further instructions. We apologize for the inconvenience and thank you for your patience. Damn, I have to be at McClough's house in 20 minutes. Stop, you can't go in there. This entrance is for staff only. I must see your ID card. Well, I left it inside the room. May I fetch it? Section 4, paragraph 3 of operational guidelines clearly states no access to sealed areas for unauthorised persons. Maybe you could fetch my bag for me. Well, not really, but I suppose I could make an exception. What does it look like? Well... There are small hearts on its left side, spelling out, I love you. One moment, please. I'm afraid your bag is not in this room. 
And you really can't let me in? Section 4, paragraph 3 of... Okay, okay, I understand. Have a nice day. Excuse me? Yes. Oh, Miss Collard. Do we know each other? I met you and George in Quaramone about four years ago. George was in prison, and you were going to a meeting with General Graciento. Do you remember? I do now, but I don't remember your name. Wayne Henderson. I was there shopping with my enchanting wife, Pearl. Ah, oui, Monsieur Henderson. Nice to see you again after such a long time. How are you doing? So-so. I'm looking for George. Ah, oh, George! How is he? I'm afraid I don't know. I haven't heard of him in a few days now. That's how men are. Sometimes they need some distance from us women. He'll call you back, honey. Hmm, that's not really George's style. Well, George does behave a little strange occasionally. Have you ever heard of a historian called Jimmy McClough? Oh yes, we were in his museum. The History Museum. That's the one, you know it? Not really, but I have an appointment with his secretary. After that, I'm going to meet Mr. McClough in person. You are going to meet Mr. McClough? The Jimmy McClough? Yes, in about 20 minutes. If I don't make it in time, I'll miss my chance and I'll have to wait three weeks. But with this search going on, I can't get out of the building. That's a disaster. You don't get to meet Jimmy McClough every day. If we can help you in any way, just let us know. Okay, thanks. May I ask you how long you and George have known each other? Since we met in Syria. That was in 1994, I believe. 1996? In 94, we visited my grandparents in Canada. Oh, yes. Terribly boring there. And all those strangely dressed policemen. Mounties! What? Those policemen you're talking about are called Mounties. Whatever. Those poly... Mounties were constantly watching us and kept inquiring. Life isn't easy in Canada for an American tourist. Those Mounties were just being nice and polite. I don't think it's nice and polite to ask how I'm doing and where I'm going three times in a row. That's intrusive. That's what it is. If you say so, honey. It's really interesting to listen to you, but unfortunately, I haven't got much time. What brings you to York? Pearl and I are here on a stopover, on our way to Morocco. We want to have a look at some old ruins there. And as we're there anyway, we'd like to do a little shopping tour. Here in York, we've already seen the traditional happiness fair. You traveled all this way to see a fair? It's not just some fair. It's possibly the most important invention in entertainment in living memory. Apart from the TV, maybe. Besides, the second biggest wheel in the world is here in York. When we arrived, it was closed for repairs. I'm sorry? There's no need. We went on the water roller coaster twice instead. Whee, that was fun. Especially when you kept screaming into my ear all the time. Don't be so prickly, Bumblebee. Oh, Bumblebee. What makes this fair so special? It's simplicity. There aren't so many attractions there. But these few are just marvelous. Well, I've never been a fan of fairs. You're missing out. You didn't by any chance see Georges at the fair, did you? 
No, I don't think so. Did we, Dwayne? Don't think so. Sorry. Well, thanks anyway. Could you do me a favour? Yes? Could you somehow distract that watchman over there? That police officer? Exactly. Do you want to get into that room? It's my only chance to get out of the building before my 20 minutes are up. Okay, we'll help you. Excuse me, sir. What can I do for you, ma'am? May we take a photo with you? You don't see a real British policeman every day. Especially when you come from America. It's an honour, ma'am. But you know, we have a policy. To hell with your policy. The uniform appears to be my size. Hmm, such things tend to happen every time things start to get interesting. A pity, isn't it? Damn, it doesn't fit. Might be useful sometime. I'll need that one soon. Damn, the watchman must have locked the door. Wait a minute. Only airport and flight personnel are allowed to leave the complex. Don't I look like one of them? That's beside the point, miss. May I see your ID, please? You know, regulations. Here's my ID. Is that really you in the photograph? Of course it's me. Who else should be on my ID? Okay, miss. Mrs. Sorry, Mrs. Mrs. Wanda Kirsch. Okay, that's the name on this ID card. So you can't have stolen it. If you only knew. Pardon? Nothing. Damn, the dirt on my shoes has alerted a watchman. Are you Mr. McClough's assistant? Who wants to know? My name is Nicole Collard. Oh, right. The journalist. We should hurry or we'll be late. Okay. This is Mr. McClough's estate. I think you can find your own way from here. I have to leave you here. My group of children are waiting. Thanks a lot. It's been a pleasure. Goodbye and uh, good luck with your interview. 
I take a look at my watch and I notice that I'm five minutes late. What am I to do? I might need it later. George would know what to do with it. Nico, down here! George? Live and in color. Each time we get separated, I find you behind bars. I guess it's just bad luck. What happens this time? I'll tell you later. First, meet an old acquaintance. Mademoiselle Kalan. Good to see you again. You evil, deceitful idiot. I thought you were dead. Nico, calm down and get us out of here first. Us? You don't expect me to get this murder out of here, do you? Yes, I do. Come on, I'll explain everything later. When I was young, I used to watch Western movies with my father. The crooks usually get out of jail by using a horse and a lasso to pull the bars out of the wall. Maybe it works in real life too. This could work. Let's get out of here. I think they're coming. Very well, Khan. How were you able to survive the attack? Out with it. You know, my father was a very popular illusionist. Night after night, he'd fill concert tents. The audience loved him. Shortly before he died, he taught me his most important tricks. I learned to disguise and to hoodwink other people, trick them. And it obviously worked. And why did you do that? Instead of pretending to be dead, you could have helped us back in Bannockburn. You might have been extremely helpful. You made it without me. We did, but mainly thanks to a huge pile of luck and an equally huge pile of plastic explosives. And because of that idiot, Guido. He really tried to blow out the fire with his mouth. I wouldn't have been too helpful anyway. Why not? I lied to you in the train. We weren't on the same side all along. I was a professional killer, a mercenary who risked his life for money. I don't understand. I knew the Templars before the incidents in Paris, Bannockburn or Syria. But not because I used to pay much attention in history class. I was simply hired by them. You worked for the Templars? That's exactly what I'm saying. One hundred thousand dollars were a good reason to start working for the Neo Templars. My first job was killing a politician in Japan, then I came to Paris. That was the Plantard job. And why the hell did you try to kill Georges? Yes, why did you try to kill me? He was just an unpleasant witness, that's all. However, I did become curious myself at some stage, so I started making inquiries. I read everything about the Templars I could get hold of. Everything about their past. Old newspapers, articles, medieval documents, journals, simply everything. Naturally, the Templars didn't like that, so I was put on their blacklist myself. And that's what caused me to act against them. A hitman seized with remorse. I don't believe it. As stupid as it might sound, but even killers have a soul, Monsieur Stobart. I decided to take your side and help you. But you didn't. You still tried to kill me. Wrong. I was never intending to kill you. Didn't you? Have you forgotten our little meeting in Syria? I haven't. That was an I don't know how many feet jump I had to do. As I said, 
I'm quite good at pretending my gun was loaded with blank ammunition. Uh, what? You're telling me I risked my life jumping down there because you threatened me with blank ammunition? It must have been an incredible experience. You said you wouldn't have been able to help us. Why? Very simple. I broke my leg when I fell off the train. What did you do in Jimmy McClough's house? That's a little complicated to explain. Only this much. The Templars still exist. There's a name engraved. Dog. <laughs> How inventive. Hi, my name is George. What's yours? My name's Miranda. How old are you, Miranda? I'm 12. Why are you sad? My dog's run away. Don't you want to look for it? I can't. Why not? I'm blind. Max is my guide dog. I see. Shall I find him for you? Would you do that, mister? Sure, Miranda. I'd love to. Maybe you can also find my dog whistle. Max must have somehow torn it from me when he ran away. But, at a closer look, I see that it's a little bent. There's a small rift in the middle. Hmm, he's snuffling at the bench. Strange. I take a closer look at the dog. And I see that he really ripped the whistle from Miranda. Carefully, I take it from him.
That doesn't work. Hi Miranda, here's Max back. Oh thanks very, very much mister. No problem. If I can do anything for you, just tell me. Okay, I'll do that. Oh my god, that looks like a bomb. I used the pointed side of the dog tag to cut the bomb free from the duct tape that held it to the bench. Even if the thought of a ticking time bomb in my pocket is anything but calming, I must take it. Somebody might trigger the ignition. Excuse me, sir? Yes. Where are you coming from? I'm from China. Don't you see that? <laughs> That's not what I mean. I mean, have you been in the train all the time? Yes, of course. I didn't notice you a moment ago. Impossible. Have you seen a young woman with a Latin guy? Maybe. I don't know. What do you mean, maybe, I don't know? I have... Um... Hey, are you alright? Oh no, he's dead! He behaved so strangely when I asked about Nico and Khan. I searched the body. And find a photo. The words C. Hang are written on the back, and there's a letter. At the end, the letter gets more and more unreadable. I can only read parts of it. The man wrote something about k, k, k term. Did he mean the Templars? That wouldn't make sense. What has a Chinese prince got to do with the Templars? I search the body again and find a roll of duct tape. Now there's duct tape on each side of the bomb. And now? That's not going to work. The tape makes the bomb stick to the door in front of the rift. One look at the clock tells me there's not much time left. Only five minutes. Quick now, I must warn the other passengers. But how? I need to get their attention somehow. Not much time left. Hi, Miranda. I'm back. Hi. Can I help you? Could I borrow your whistle? Of course. Here you are. Thanks.
please move quickly to the other end of the coach. A bomb is going to go off in a few moments. Have you seen a dark-haired woman with a Latin-looking guy? Is she your wife, son? Well, not yet, but she's my girlfriend. So, you're a couple? You could say that. Then why is she roaming around with that Latin-looking guy, instead of being with you? That's a long story. Listen, I don't want to bore you with the story of my life, so have you seen them? No. Are you the bartender? No, I'm the Holy St. Peter. Calm down, I'm only asking. And I'm only answering. Okay, okay, so you're the bartender. Aren't you wondering why there are so few people here? Oh, a new pub opened right across the road. Bobby country, how noble. Business has been going down here ever since. Apart from Mike and Stephen over there, not many people find their way into this place. Those two are virtually part of this pub. So, what do you do all day? Not much. I clean the glasses, read newspapers, and do whatever comes up. Sometimes, I'm extremely lucky and the dishwasher packs up. So then, I can repair it. What kind of newspapers do you read? I don't care, I read whatever. I'd even read a paper that's five years old. Do you know anything about the Templars? Oh, yes indeed, sir, I do. I read a lot and attend seminars, so I learn quite a few things. And I love the Templars. They're my second hobby, so to speak. Yeah, mine too, so to speak. Tell me something about them. A medieval order of knights eradicated by Philip III. In three weeks, there's going to be an exhibition about the Templars in Paris. I really must attend, even if my wife will kick up a fuss about it. I am impressed. Do you know whether the Templars can be linked to the Chinese culture? Certainly. The Templars had good connections to the Chinese royalty. Which royalty? They are said to have connections to Prince Zai Hang. Zi Hang? Exactly. There's some uncertainty about both parties' intentions, though. After all, the Prince wasn't able to support the Templars with soldiers, as his own army was so badly trained. And the Templars were too greedy to support the Chinese court financially. The links are supposed to be intact even today, though. Are there any further clues? The exhibition in Paris is expected to be very helpful regarding that matter. It may even provide some new evidence. Do you know where exactly in Paris it will be held? I'm afraid not, but I'm going to find out soon. I only know this much. A seal is mentioned in one of the last writings of the Grand Master Jacques de Molay. And he wrote about the return of the Templars, which will be initiated by that very seal. Do you think such a seal exists? Oh yes, I'm quite sure of that. What does that mean? Nothing. I doubt that the seal will be of any importance. Jacques de Molay only wanted to frighten his pursuers and enemies shortly before he died. A very unnatural death, I may add. But all he got were taunts and derision. I need to get to that exhibition in Paris as quickly as possible. Maybe I'll find the seal there. It must be important for the Templars to kill for it. But first, I need a room for the night. There are no flights to Paris today. Could I rent a room? Shouldn't be a problem. We've got plenty of rooms on the first floor, and they're all free. Then I'll take one. There you go. It's the first door on the left-hand side. Thanks.
I put the key into the lock. There's a creaking noise and the key slips out of the lock again. Either the bartender gave me the wrong key or the lock is broken. Damn it! The bartender has left! A needle won't hurt. Good afternoon. Cheers, mate. My name is George Stobart. I'm on a trip around Britain. I'm Mike, not Steve. Do you have any idea where the bartender has gone? Yeah, he went to get himself something to read. Should be back in an hour. Well, who looks after the pub in the meantime? We do. You? Yeah, of course. Why not? Yeah, we're used to it, mate. It's not the first time Mr. Powell has left his pub. Do you know how I can get into my room? The... Key doesn't work. A problem we know well. What can I do? Are you up for a little match? You won't tell me unless I agree, right? Right, mate. And you have to win, of course. No problem. Do you know Indian wrestling? Arm wrestling, you mean? That's what you want to do? Right. Are you ready? Ready. Here we go. I win. I'm no match for you. Never give up, mate. Is that water you're drinking? Yes, it is. I don't drink alcohol anymore. Now you're surprised, aren't you? A little. You see, a couple of years ago, I forgot my own children's names. All because of the drinking. Since then, I've been on the water. And besides, my belly has become sort of tender. I can't walk into a pharmacy and steal drugs. There's a variety of small files on the counter. The label reads laxative. No, I really don't want any. There are some health magazines in this rack. Not really interesting. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. What can I do for you? I wondered if I could get this file over here. That's a laxative. Yes, I know. I've been constipated for days now. What are the exact symptoms? Um, well... I knew it. Listen, mister. Laxative is free, and you don't even need a prescription for it. Nevertheless, I only hand out laxatives to customers who really need them, and you Obviously don't. How long have you been working here? Please, sir. If you need my help, just tell me. Otherwise, I'd be grateful if you let me go on with my business. I'm not particularly interested in idle chit-chat. I just thought that... I just told you not to bother me unless you need medical treatment. Understood. But accept a report about a school that was hit by an outbreak of constipation, affecting hundreds of children. There's nothing of interest. Wait a minute. Constipation. Here's something about the symptoms. The children complained about severe pain in the stomach and back. Furthermore, there were complaints about a nasty feeling of nausea. Sir, can I please get one of those files? I've told you repeatedly not to bother me. Okay, Stobart. 
now it's time to show how good you are at acting. But sir, my stomach hurts and my back. The pain is unbearable, it's agony. Hmm, you really seem to be ill. Better take one of these, but only one. Mike runs to the washroom like a scalded cat. The fact that his belly was a little tender has fueled the effect of the laxative. Steven has run after him. The table is wet now. Now what? The soap makes the surface of the table quite slippery. The soap makes the surface of the table quite slippery. Hey Mike, another match? Of course. And I'm afraid you lose, Mike. Looks like it's... But I could swear my elbow slipped on the table. Come on, Mike. Don't be a sore loser. You're right. I'm probably imagining things. You won fair and square. So, how can I open the door? Just give it a decent kick, and it will open all right. That's it? That's it, mate. Thank you, Mike. The barkeeper was talking about an exhibition in Paris, but where could... Come on, Stobart, use your brain. The only museum that comes to mind is the Muse Croon, but there are two problems. First, it's been a long time, and I don't know if I can find it. Second, Andre. I guess I don't have a choice.